saw at the, uh, the end of the game, you, you were the one that had the ball in hand, just placed the ball down very quickly and ran back toward the locker room. Is that are you trying to talk about a game like this? No, I, that? That, was, that was good win. Let's go. Let's go home. Obviously, we're, we're 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 happy with one win. We're happy with splitting this, um, you know, splitting this, uh, splitting on their home court. But we're not satisfied. Um, but that was, I mean, that wasn't. I didn't plan that. Or that was no message. It was just like I ah, drop the ball. I don't want to know. Because that that's my like. I don't want to delay a game. I'm put the ball down. Like I, it's not in my hands no more. I can't call a delay. So I just put it down. and Was like, let's go. What'd you think about uh, what Brandon was able to do on a big stage tonight? I've been saying it. I mean, I've been saying it over and over again. I, I think Brandon Ingram is the best court, is the best player on every court that we step on. Um, he he showed it tonight. He was um, shot after shot, contested. It didn't matter. He don't see you. Release is so high, he don't see you. He uh, he will and uh, just close that game out. So. I'll say it again and again, and I'll keep saying it, win or loss. I think Brandon Ingram's the best player on the court. Yeah, I mean, you, you said after that play-in game, um, Brandon was one of the two hardest workers you played with. Um, you know, how special is, you know, that, that work ethic that he's got? It's huge. It's huge. I mean, he's, you know, what, 24? Uh, I believe 24. Um, and his game's just, you could see it just expanding every single year since he's gotten the league. and. Um, you know what he's able to do is not just a scorer, but a playmaker as well. Is uh, is proof and and uh, you know it's proof of all the work he puts in. So, you know those hours in the gym or those unseen hours are being seen right now, and I'm just happy as happy as hell for him. Yeah, and that was obviously a difficult loss for you guys. Game one, going against a team with the best record in the NBA. Just what did you think about the way you guys responded in game two in their building to walk away with the win? Um, I thought the way we responded was great. You know, we came out with first half energy, um, and then, uh, but the way we closed the second half of the game one carried over, right? So, you know, they threw a first, they threw a heck of a first punch, kept us to 38 in the first half in game one, and then we responded with 65 in the second. Granted, we lost that game, but the way we executed, the way we played, and the performance that we put forward in that second half was um, was big carryover tonight. And uh, you guys switched a lot more in pick and rolls. Uh, just how did you think that worked out for you guys defensively, and how much did that you know affect their guards? Um, I thought it was great. You know, we've got great length on this team. You know, we've got uh, you know we we don't switch much with JV, but you know, obviously Jax is a freak. Um, you know, he's seven foot with a seven four wingspan. Um, you know, I'm not that tall. Yeah, you know, I'm only about six seven, six eight on a good. I'll say six eight on a good day. Um, but you know, I seven two wingspan. So you know, we were switchable guys. Trey Murphy, long wingspan, tall guy. Brandon Ingram. You know, we've got height and length on the wings, and in, in, you know, in, in switchable positions. So um, I think that makes life hard for um, that makes life hard for anybody. What did you think of the job Jackson did, especially in that third quarter? Uh, I mean, kind of changing a lot of things with with way he was running up and down uh, up and down the court. Uh, the biggest thing with Jack, like, I can't say enough positive about Jackson. Um, the Spurs game, the Spurs game, he had a rough one. Clippers game, he had a rough one. Game one didn't get to impact the game, didn't get to do a whole lot. And tonight, the way he responded, um, it seems like a little thing from the outside looking in, but that's that's so hard. That's so hard to stay mentally locked in on at. Yeah, I think he's what 21. At 21 years old, I can tell you right now, if I don't think I would have been that. I don't think I would have been able to 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 stay in that mindset to to affect the game tonight the way he did. But um, you know, blocking blocking maybe the first shot of the game. I think a Jay Crowder three pointer, um, hitting the offensive glass right away, and then I'll tell you what, I was a good athlete. Yeah, I'm still a good athlete, but I was a really good athlete about four years ago, five years ago, <laughs> and he. I couldn't. I couldn't. He would kill me in a in hundred meters. So the way he was running up and down the court like that, man, I, I don't know who would catch him. And and I'm just so happy for him tonight because the fortitude, the mental fortitude to stay with it and stick with stick with this process and and um, and uh, stay locked in is is massive. And we are going to kin continue to need that effort from him. How much did the not only the play in tournament. The build up to the play in tournament, playing those six, seven, eight games that were playoff like for for you guys, 
help you think some of these young guys be able to deal with an atmosphere like this, uh, you know, and trying to hold them off at the end of a game? I think it was big time. I think it was big time. You know, he, um, you know, those games were, um, like you said, playoff atmospheres. Uh, you know, we played San Antonio at home, Lakers on the road, and then, you know, the Clippers game was blowout. But um, those, the San Antonio one at home and the Lakers one, where we were positioning for 9 10, and, you know, those were really close. Getting, being able to win both of those was, um, was huge, you know, for the, you know, for Trey, for Jose, for Herb, um, you know, even for Jax, you know, guys that have been in for a few years, it's, there's basketball. Like I, I said it before, it's, there's ba regular season basketball is checkers. This is chess and it's, there is counter move, there's moves and counter moves and counter moves to the counter move. So the fact that we could get practice with that and those guys could see the mental gymnastics going on in, in a, in a within every possession of a game of, of a playoff series and a playoff game is is big time and um, you know so uh, you know those games the importance of those games is not to be understated. That's you about uh, CJ and just um, with the playoff experience he's had time in the league what does he bring to this young team and what has he meant to this team overall since he's been in? Um, I would say a calming presence um, you know there's a lot of times where um, you know, first half, Book was – Devin Booker was Devin Booker in the first half. He was unbelievable. And it feels good when, you know, you got – we have two of them. We have two of them where, where you can just take the ball and whew, let's take a deep breath. They're going to get us a good shot. And, and uh, you know, CJ's, CJ's a calming presence for us out there. You know, he's obviously makes, he makes ridiculous shots. Um, you know, and, and is a really good playmaker, but I think just his level of basketball IQ with the ball is 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 big time, um, especially for a young group like this. Yeah, you've mentioned a few times how you tell B.I., you know, you're the best player on the floor, you know, no matter who we play. How much confidence does that give a team when you can look, up, look over and be like, hey, we have one of those guys on our squad? Yeah, B.I. is him. Um, he's that guy, and, and, you know, I just – a lot of times, it's what I found is it's easier for um, it's easier for us as the guys like watching him day in and day out make these shots and and go about his work and see the way he does it because to him it seems normal, but you and I can walk in the gym and go, that ain't normal. It's not normal, right? Like I work out too. I'm an NBA player too. I'm really good. <laughs> I'm really good. I watch Bi and him, you know, I watch Bi and guys like Bi and CJ and it's like. It's like sometimes like they're playing a different sport. They're just they're they're that impressive. So and to them that's normal. So sometimes you know sometimes the support characters you know need to need to uh, need to uplift those guys and let them know like hey you know you're really that guy. Like hey I believe in you. Yeah you know, I believe in you. And and bi you know I just want to be you know I just want to make sure he knows that this whole team is rocking with him. Missed shot, made shot, turnover, good good pass, bad pass. I don't care. I'm rocking with him. Um, hopefully that boosts his confidence, and you know, because I want that sky high. Going back to Jackson, what did you think of the he gets blocked on one end by McHale and busts his ass back? Yeah, anything you can do, <laughs> I can do better. Um, Jackson Hayes does some of the most ridiculous. Like again, I've said, I said it. Like I am a very good athlete, right? Like <laughs> I'm like a top one percent athlete. Jackson Hayes is like a one percent of the one percent, and he's. Mm -hmm. It's gross the things he can do. In the w next layup line, please, I, please. Oh, I next layup line, I want you to watch how easily he one, two, three, pop and does a between the legs dunk like it's nothing every single game. I get you're seven foot, but like to be seven foot in that athletic is absurd. Um, you know that play was that play was awesome. Obviously, it's something that hopefully should be showed on uh, ESPN and Sports Center and all that. But um, again. But just back to Jackson. I'm just so happy for him for tonight. Can you move to Jim on Zoom, please? Larry, I feel like the list of guys that I could ask you about is extremely long from this game, so I think I'll narrow it down to just kind of the rookies, just what they did tonight. I guess starting with Jose, I mean, what did you think of, of for him to deliver the way he did in the fourth quarter as a rookie in a playoff game? Uh, Jose was great. Jose was great. You know, he hit, you know, um, I think he checked in the game. 
we right away, I, me and him, I found him on an open side pick and roll and tell him, pushed him, you know, waved him down to the corner because I know once if I can screen his man, if I can screen his man at the right angle, it's, you've got Jose, you've got, um, you've got Jose going downhill on a big and as a big myself, there's not a whole lot you can do about that. So he came out, boom, knocked down his little floater. So now you got to respect his drive. And then, um, like maybe the very next possession or the next two possessions, um, I caught it. Pump fake took one one dribble, two dribbles. His man helped off, kicked it out, and splashed a big three. You know, I don't exactly remember the score, but I know that three was a monster one. And then you know he he made another one. You know, another one throughout the night. But um, he was again. These rookies are fearless. They don't they don't back down. Um, they don't back down. They act like they've been here before, and um, you know, I think it's no surprise that you know, I, I, Trey Murphy might have been a three-year guy, but you know, Herb, Jose, you know, these guys are four-year guys, so they, you know, they've they've uh, matured physically and 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 you know, and mentally, and are ready to be in these situations. Um, last quick thing: How impressive is it to see what Trey's done? To again, he's had he's been huge in both of these playoff games against Phoenix. Just to come from where he came from in terms of. He wasn't in the rotation, I think, a little bit before you got here. Right. No, it's it's crazy that you know a, a kid that talented. Um, I hadn't necessarily heard of him when I and I was in the same conference when I was with Portland. Um, hadn't really heard of him. You know, I knew you know I had followed the draft and I saw he got picked seventeenth and all that, and then I hadn't really heard of him. And then when I got here and you see him work mm -hmm. out, and you see you know you see you know you walk up on him, you see his stature, you're like, that's a pro. You know, he, that is a, he, I think he's taller than I am. Um, you know, again, I would never say that to him. Um, it, I don't know what it is, but he's, I think it's just barefoot. He got me. Um, you know, but, you know, just, again, the level of shot making, you know, he's, he's had in these play-ins and a few couple playoff games, his, his first little bit is, um, is just super impressive. And, you know, along with, along with I'm just so happy for, the, for these guys. You know, I'm just so happy for him. You know, when I was my first few years being a young guy, I did not get this experience. So um, this is setting them up for really successful, meaningful careers. And um, the fact that they're able to play at this level on this stage so early is, is uh, speaks volumes to um, the kind of preparation this coaching staff has done with them. Thank you.